let's go back to CPAC, to President Trump speaking at this conservative political alliance, former President Trump. And in the midst of his speech, these were the most quoted words. Listen to what he had to say. In 2016, I declared, I am your voice. Today, I add, I am your warrior. I am your justice. And for those who have been wronged and betrayed, I am your retribution. I am your retribution. All right. So those words, I am your retribution, they have been quoted left and right. His words have created a firestorm of controversy, as you would expect. Now, on the one hand, if, if Donald Trump is your man, if you voted for him, if you want to vote again, if you're excited that he's running for president in 2024, you're thrilled to hear this because once again, he's fighting for you. Once again, he's coming against the system. You've been hurt by the deep state. You've been hurt by the government. You've been, you've been hurt by the social media giants. You've been hurt by this group or that group. And, and not only is he your voice, but he's your warrior. He's your justice. He's your retribution. He's going to get your, he, he's going to get your payback. You've been hurt. He's going to hurt those who hurt you, and he's going to help you in the process. Trump is fighting for you. If, if you're against Trump, if you didn't vote for him or you wouldn't vote for him, or you're a critic of Trump, these words are actually scandalous to you. You can't believe that he would actually say this. This is him at his worst, at his ugliest, at his most obnoxious, at his most dangerous. What, was he going to call some holy war against other people? Is he himself going to carry out acts of vengeance against people? So... Depending on your viewpoint, you hear those words very, very differently. Uh, let me tell you what comes to mind when I hear those words. I think of Romans, the 12th chapter, where, where, where God says, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And that goes back to a quote from Deuteronomy 32 that, that Paul is actually quoting. In fact, let me, let me read the passage in terms of where Paul actually quotes these words. This is what he says, Romans chapter 12, beginning verse 19. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For in doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. That's quoting from Proverbs 25. Do not be overcome by evil. Overcome evil with good. See, when, when we want personal vengeance, that's very different than justice. When, when a, a woman has been abandoned by her husband, she and her kids have been abandoned by her husband, and he's not paying alimony, he's not paying child support, they're hurting because of it, and he's a multi-billionaire, and he's just neglecting them. Well, it's perfectly good and right to go to the court and to get him to pay. The goal is not to hurt him. The goal is not to take him out. The goal is not to see him die or go to hell. The goal is that he does what is right so that your family is taken care of. That's one thing. It's one thing if you have a business agreement with someone and, and they betray you and they, 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 they rob the company blind and now you can't pay your employees, your hardworking employees because of this, and you go to court for righteous settlement. Righteousness is a good thing. And we should all have a heart for justice. I mean, throughout Scripture, it calls for justice, justice, justice. This, this is some of the verses that come to mind. Deuteronomy 16, 20, this is part of the Torah, part of the law. Follow justice and justice alone so that you may live and possess the land the Lord your God is giving you. And through the prophet Amos, God told the children of Israel, I hate your religious festivals. They're full of hypocrisy. As he said to Isaiah, your hands are stained with blood. Rather... Amos 5, 24, let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never-failing stream. It even says in, in Psalm 89 and Psalm 97 that righteousness and justice, the foundation of God's throne. So we as God's people should be people who stand for justice. When we see inequality in our society, we should stand against it. When we see prejudice, discrimination, when we see various aspects of injustice, we should stand against those things and pursue justice, pursue righteousness. That's part of pursuing God's kingdom. These things are important in his sight. Paul even said in Romans 14 that the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. But righteousness and the pursuit of justice are very, very different from retribution and from vengeance and, and from I'm, you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you. So our heart should be for those who've sinned against us. God, help them to repent so that they can receive mercy. 
I was at, at a private prayer retreat this past weekend, and somehow it came to mind, different people who've sinned against me over the years, different people have lied about me, maligned me, tried to hurt me over the years, whether they knew they were lying or not, they, what they did was malicious and wrong. And I was just before the Lord, and, and a number of people or situations came to mind, and I said, Lord, I don't want personal vindication. I don't need personal vindication, because God knows. If God knows your heart, that's sufficient. He'll, he'll set things right. He knows how to do that, all right? Uh, Lord, I, this is not about me personally. I said, I just want to see them blessed. And in my heart of hearts before the Lord, that was really my desire. I want to see them blessed, but I know as long as they're spreading gossip and slander, I know as long as they're critical of the Holy Spirit, I know as long as they're spreading misinformation or trying to hurt me or hurt others, that they can't be fully blessed. So I want them to repent, not so that they come groveling to me, Mike, I'm so sorry I sinned against you. Fine, I forgive them, that's not the issue. But rather, I wanna see them blessed. If my heart was vengeance, I wanna see them hurt. I wanna see them go down. I want to see them suffer. I want to see them pay. That's God's business. Let God sort that out. Again, I'm not talking about pursuing justice. If, if, if someone murders your neighbor and you, you see that car pull away and, and you, immediately, you, you call 911, you give them the license plate, say there was a murder just committed, I saw the car pull away. You want to see justice. You, you want to see things set right in terms of the courts and that person off the streets and in jail. You want to see that. That's different than saying, I'm going to hunt that person down and I'm going to kill them because they killed my neighbor. There are two different spirits and two different attitudes. So for us, don't, don't look to a man or party or an organization to be your retribution. Remember what God says, vengeance is mine. I will repay. On our end, how do we treat our enemies? What do we do? We overcome evil with good. If your enemy's hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In so doing, you'll heap coals of fire on his head. What exactly does that mean? Commentators debate that. It seems to mean you, you will bring them to a point of contrition and repentance. It even may refer back to an, an Egyptian rite where a penitent person would have literally coals of fire put on their head as an act of repentance. Paul could be saying, metaphorically quoting from Proverbs, that that's what happens. Overcome evil with good. Bless those who curse you. Show love to those who hate you. This is how we live differently. This is how we follow the Jesus example. This is how we do not retaliate. I will call out evil, but it's not a personal matter for me wanting vengeance on someone or I'm trying to hurt them. I will rebuke that which is wrong. I will pursue justice and stand with you in the pursuit of justice. I will fight for the lives of the unborn. I will stand against a corrupt influences trying to hurt our children. Absolutely. But that is very, very different from retribution and vengeance. So let's be careful to leave to God what belongs to God and then for us to do our part as followers of Jesus. Hey, friends, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, click on one of the boxes on the screen, check out another one of our videos and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. You know, we discovered that about 60% of you that are watching our videos aren't subscribers. So subscribe today doesn't cost you a dime. And if you want to support our work, Line of Fire, and all the things that we do, follow one of the links on the screen below.